Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the absorption of carbohydrates. So when the food materials reach the small intestine, all complex dietary carbohydrates like starch, glycogen and disaccharides. These all complex dietary carbohydrates are converted to simpler monosaccharides. That time carbohydrate digestion is completed. Then after digestion, these monosaccharides are completely absorbed almost entirely from the small intestine. From the small intestine. And here the absorption rate is maximum for galactose. It is moderate for glucose. And the absorption rate is minimum for fructose. And there are two mechanisms are responsible for the absorption of these monosaccharides. Two mechanisms, simple diffusion and active transport. These are the two mechanisms for the absorption of monosaccharides. First one is simple diffusion. The simple diffusion is dependent on sugar concentration gradients between intestinal lumen, mucosal cells and the blood plasma. It is dependent on sugar concentration gradient between intestinal lumen, mucosal cells and the blood plasma. All monosaccharides are absorbed to some extent by simple passive diffusion. That is simple diffusion. Then coming to active transport. Glucose and galactose. Glucose and galactose are absorbed very rapidly and it is by active transport and it requires energy. So it is energy dependent, it is sodium dependent and it requires a carrier protein or a transport protein. It requires a carrier protein or a transport protein. And this carrier protein has two binding sites. It has two binding sites. One for sodium and another for glucose. So here, This glucose and sodium share this same transport system, glucose and sodium. These two share the same transport system that is known as symport or co-transport. And this transport system is known as sodium dependent glucose transporter or SGLT, sodium dependent glucose transporter. So here, concentration of sodium is higher in the intestinal lumen than in the mucosal cells. Here, concentration of sodium is higher in the intestinal lumen. So sodium moves into the cells along its concentration gradient. This time, glucose is also transported into the intestinal cells from the lumen. So, concentration of sodium, it is higher in the intestinal lumen than in the mucosal cells. So, sodium moves from the lumen to the mucosal cells. That time, glucose is also transported. Here, same transport system for sodium and glucose that is known as SGLT1. This is SGLT1. So, sodium diffuses from lumen to the cell along with this glucose. Here, Sodium concentration in the cytosol is less, so sodium moves from lumen to the cytosol. It means sodium gradient, sodium gradient need to be maintained. This is maintained by sodium potassium ATPase. This sodium potassium ATPase which is located on the basolateral surface. And it transport 3 sodium in exchange of 2 potassium. 3 sodium out of the cytoplasm in exchange of potassium into the cytoplasm 
that is against the concentration gradient. For this, it uses ATP. So, sodium concentration in the cytosol is less. So, sodium moves from lumen to the cytosol. It means sodium gradient needs to be maintained and it is maintained by sodium potassium ATPase which is located in the basolateral surface. This sodium potassium ATPase which is involved in the transport of 3 sodium out of the cytoplasm, this sodium, 3 sodium out of the cytoplasm into the blood and in the exchange of 2 potassium into the cytoplasm against the concentration gradient. So, it requires energy here it uses ATP. So, sodium is expelled from the cytosol is by, uh, by this sodium potassium ATPase. Then, so at the interstitial lumen absorption is by SGLT1. There is another transported in the intestinal epithelial cells that is known as GLUE2. So, in the intestinal lumen the sodium transport it is by SGLT1. This absorption is by SGLT1, but in the intestinal epithelial cell, there is another transporter that is known as GLUE2. This GLUE2, it is having high KM, that means it is having a low affinity for glucose. Low affinity for glucose. This GLUE2, GLUE2 having low affinity for glucose and it is having high KM. So, that means glucose uptake through this GLUE2 is only when the glucose concentration is very high. When the glucose concentration is very high, there will be glucose uptake through this GLUE2. And this uh, GLUE2 pulls glucose into the potter circulation. So, from here SGLT1 into the from lumen. SGLT1 transports or absorbs this uh, glucose into the cytosol. From cytosol, glucose is transported into the blood through this GLUE2. Then in the luminal side, there is another transporter that is known as GLUE5. It is a fructose transporter and it is sodium independent. It is sodium independent that is GLUE5, it is a fructose transporter. Here this uh, uh, SGLT1 it is sodium dependent, GLUT5 is sodium independent. For example, absorption of fructose and this fructose these all are transported through this GLUT2 into the portal circulation. And pentoses, pentoses and galactose, pentoses and galactose these are absorbed passively by simple diffusion. And these glucose, galactose and fructose, these are transported out of the enterocyte through this GLUE2. This GLUE2 is present in the basolateral surface. Then these monosaccharides are diffused down the concentration, concentration gradient into the capillary blood. So that is about the absorption of carbohydrates. This is today's topic. Thank you for watching.